Hello, everyone. I'm Gail Ludwig, the board chair of Chicago Foundation for Women. And now it's time to kick off our program. Thank you. So thank you all for being here on this absolutely glorious day. Chicago Foundation for Women is about making smarter connections between need, money, and solutions. We improve women's lives through grants, advocacy, leadership development, educational programs, and free workshops for our grantees. We work hard because we envision a future where all women and girls have the opportunity to achieve their full potential and live in safe, just, and healthy communities. <laughs> By being here, whether you're new or you've known us for years, you are part of this community. Look around the room, almost 2,000 people who care deeply, who put their money where their heart is. You are part of the success and part of our history as the foundation celebrates 25 years strong. Over the past year, the foundation has been lucky to have a dedicated group of volunteers who have helped shape our 25-year celebration. Without the energy and the commitment of our 20 Without their energy and commitment, our 25th anniversary, our silver anniversary to be exact, wouldn't be the same. So on behalf of everyone who cares about CFW, I'd like to extend a heartwell thanks and congratulations to the leader of our anniversary task force, Frances Siemens. <laughs> Frances, thank you. Step, Frances. So being here today means that you are proud to be part of this dynamic and vibrant community of women and men. And I see men out there, so thank you very much for being part of this. <laughs> we believe that when women and girls are secure, whole communities are made better, and together we're making that happen. Today, this program will walk you through Chicago Foundation for Women's history, our challenges, our success, and, and the strong shoulders we stand on. But more than that, we will share our vision for the future and invite you to continue to be part of our community. To start us off, I'd like to introduce the Foundation's interim president, Mary X. We're skipping the long introductions today, and there are bios in your programs. But I will say this about Mary. We are incredibly fortunate to have such an experienced and enthusiastic leader at the helm of the Foundation. She has been part of the Chicago nonprofit and philanthropic community for 35 years. Please join me in welcoming Mary X. Thank you, Thank you, Gail. There you are. It's been a privilege to work with you and the entire board. The Foundation is lucky to have such dedicated leadership from all of you and our Alumni Council. I also want to recognize with affection and respect the staff of CFW. You are a small but powerful team full of talent and enthusiasm. And of course, it's been an honor to work with our grantees, many of you here, a diverse group that does so much good work on behalf of women and girls. I'm happy to say I'm no newcomer to Chicago Foundation for Women. I've been a senior advisor over the past three years in both the development and grant-making areas. In addition, I personally have been a donor for more than two decades, and so I feel especially proud to see how far the foundation has come over the years. Before I go on, let me get one question out of the way. My name. My last name, spelled E-X, is by husband Mitchell's name and mine for the last 35 years. No one in his family knew their name's history, so Mitchell and I went to the Newberry Library to research it. X turns out to be an old Chicago name, here since 1879 as a German Jewish derivative of ox or oaks. Now that's out of the way. <laughs> I'm proud of this old Chicago connection. After all, 
Chicago Foundation for Women's tradition of community building and women's leadership is rooted in decades of local history. More than 100 years ago, Jane Addams led efforts to build the nation's first settlement houses in Chicago's industrial neighborhoods. Her Hull House inspired more women to take change into their own hands, including Florence Town, who began the Erie Neighborhood House, an organization which I directed for eight years. The legacy of these women's work continues to influence the way philanthropy is done in Chicago. The idea that philanthropy should be based in and informed by the community served. It is in that tradition that Chicago Foundation for Women was founded by four compassionate and generous women. Marjorie Craig Benton, Sunny Fisher, Iris Krieg, and Lucia Woods Lindley. They recognize They recognized that the problems women faced were not priorities for most charities or funders. We would not be here if it were not for your vision, commitment, talent, and treasure. You are models for all of us, and for that we are grateful. Thank you. For 25 years, Chicago Foundation for Women has fostered community among people that share a common belief. When women and girls are secure, whole communities are made better. Over the past year, in spite of a challenging economic climate, Chicago Foundation for Women continues to grow. We know we can't wait for the economy to turn around to tackle the problems women and girls face. To keep up with increased need, our grantees are working hard, and so are we. I am proud to say that our 2009 grants totaled almost $1.2 million. <laughs> to organizations addressing the needs of women and girls in our community. Our grantees have been key in shaping the year's most significant advocacy successes for women, including federal health care reform, including an Illinois law requiring police crime labs to test DNA evidence from rape survivors, including a statute that changes how Chicago public schools deal with bullying against lesbian and gay students, including a city law enlarging the buffer zones around clinics offering abortion services so women can access health care without harassment and fear. Our grantees are also maintaining crucial services for women and girls during a time of increasing need and decreasing public resources. Domestic violence agencies and rape crisis hotlines are doing more with less in order to help women survive and heal. Health clinics are providing low-cost services and educating women about their bodies and their rights. Girls in underserved neighborhoods are encouraged to learn about science, play sports, and see themselves as tomorrow's leaders. We continue at CFW to create and engage powerful leaders, and I'm happy to report that the Foundation's five leadership councils experienced unprecedented growth this year. Our councils include women from African American, Asian American, Latina, lesbian, and young women's communities. These volunteer-driven councils are promoting and expanding women's philanthropy across diverse communities. We are hopeful that you share with us the celebratory spirit in the room today and join us as we work together to make our community secure for women and girls.